Good morning, Polecat and I um, welcome you to a video on rawhide bagging a bow. Okay, Polecat. And this is one that I just started working on a little while ago. It's a uh, dyed kind of, kind of a fadey black. Now there's always a question of should you bag or should you not bag? Well, on my paddle bows, generally I don't need to bag them. But when I start getting into like the 50 pound range plus, I figure, why not? <clears throat> you know, it, well, it gives a good surface for painting and, and decorating. And also, um, with my rawhide bag bows, I wind up using a water based polyurethane so they're weather protected. And really, they're great for target shooting, but you know, when you start getting into like the 45 pound plus paddle bows, they're great hunting weapons. And so I try to go in muted patterns, um, rawhide backing just for durability and in the poly for weather protection, so if you get caught in the rain while you're hunting, um, you're good. And just ruggedness. You may lose a few feet per second, you know, of course, with the added weight, but, you know, they have um, speed to spare, so that's no problem. The process of rawhide backing it's really easy because I use good materials. These are a couple of raw strips I haven't marked yet. Pine hollow longbows. Um, these things are really clean. But I'll, I'll still degrease them just as a matter of habit, but Mike makes it so easy. And the first step, I already have like the rawhide soaked, and I'll talk about that, and rolled up in the plastic bag so it doesn't dry out. The first step, easy. Everyone can do it. You have to find the thickest ends. These are the thick sides. Watch out, bulkhead. And then just stick them together and take the ball. Oop, watch your tail. And just get it. It's not going to be dead center. The wall actually it is. Don't freak out if your rawhide strips don't go to the end because once you soak them and they stretch, they will go to the end. And it's a simple matter of marking the pencil along the lines, along the bow, and then cut them out. You may want to give yourself an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch on the outside of it. Um, you never can tell before you soak how much they're going to stretch widthwise, and you don't want to come up short. It's always nice to have a little overlap on the side because it helps the the, the hide stick with excuse me, bouquet with a little overlap. The edges dry out first, and then it'll grip it, and then allow um, the center to really shrink and bind. Again, a little overlap. Is good because they dry out fast and grip faster and then it holds the bow. It's almost like they are wrapped with either gauze or ace bandage or whatever you use. Whatever you use, I use gauze. It needs to be permeable, not like inner tubes or stuff like that. It won't dry. You want it to dry. Hey, watch out. Yeah. So I just get this away. Preparing the bow, it's good enough to use um, 120 grit. Let me get grit. 120 grit on the back of the bow. Um, because I'm going to do something that you don't see. I don't think you'll ever see it ever. It's when I'm sizing it. Oh, notice it's carpet. My vacuum cleaner caught on fire, so I need to do a fork on it. But uh, I'll fix it. I will use my mystery product here. This is a little bit of water, or water with a little bit of Dawn detergent in it. The dish soap will break down surface tension and allow your glue, whether or not you use tight bond 2 or the regular tight bond or high glue, to soak into the wood. And it's a trick that I learned from being a model railroader, is that you take Elmer's glue, dish soap and water, and you spray it on your um, landscape, and then it soaks in. 
it not only helps water soak in, it helps glue soak in. I cleaned out my sink really good. You grease the sink, you never know, you know, so you want to clean the sink really good. And then soak your rawhide strips after you trim them in a little bit of Dawn or Joy or something like that, dish soap and water to help decrease them and also get some soap into the, the rawhide. Again, soap not only helps the glue soak into the wood, it helps the, soap, the glue soak into the rawhide. Now what I do is take my bow, oh, let me get rid of this thing, so I might need this little horse bow in the process of steam bending. My house looks like a bow shop. I'm going to get, get the edges. Dampen this a little bit. And chase it with glue. So don't do the whole thing at once. You don't have this to dry out. You mix the gluey water and the glue. It's no problem. It's all good. Gluey water and glue is a beautiful thing. And I work on carpet. I can watch Netflix. Oh, there's Ice Pilots. Show about these. I have to say they're crazy because they're in the Northwest Territories. And they're working in like 35 degree below weather all the time. It's my sizing. Just working my way down. Don't worry about getting water on the ball. I know what some people are saying. They have dry season wood, you're putting water on it. Well, this doesn't go all the way to the core, it's surface, so it'll dry out fast. And this gluey water, oh, you can hear the glue soaking into the wood. And look at that, I'm just getting the edges. It's not slopping all over, it's not dripping on the carpet. After I sanded the bow, I wiped it with a cloth so I don't have little with grain that's all over there. I read in the Boyer's Bible. I still read my Bible. About roughly back in the year talking more or less like needing three hands and swearing and having a hard time. Well, need to have a hard time at all. It's so simple, it's so sure, guaranteed results. You just follow this method. And I always work from one direction and going back, so everything is even. Although there's no question that this will bond well. I don't like to have tons of glue. You don't need to have a slap in this when you're dry, but in fact, I'm eliminating excess weight by not just having so much glue that when I put the rawhide back in that, it slaps all over the place. There we go. So if I work on that one first, because it's, it's drying a little bit, and then go to this one. And it would be all even. This is the same jig I use for single packing. And I'm going to have my glue on the cardboard there in case my beautiful wife shows up. I learned that YouTube is able to find out copyrighted material. I don't want to have to read this. There we go. Always good to have a damp paper towel. Dry a little bit, so can 
This is nice. I've got this thing so I can adjust it for life. Don't want to get any glue on the belly. Because if I do oil that to get some color, that glue will keep it from working. One nice thing about the strips from Pine Hollow Longbow is they're thin, thin evenly, so I don't need to worry about having any like sky joint or anything on the handle. It's thin enough so when I do the handle wrap, it covers up that, that overlap. Okay. Let's see how these things work. This is nice and damp, and all I did was wring these out with my fingers and then dry off the excess water with the paper towel. Now as far as which side you have down, this is the flesh side. This was the hair side. So I'm going to have the flesh side down, kind of center that more or less. And I'm not in the process of blowing, so I can adjust things. That'll make it to the end. I do like to have the rawhide all the way to the tips. So I'm just going to stick these on and see where I am. I'm going to have to pull it a little bit, but that's okay. You don't need a whole lot of overlap in the handle, so that's some way over. And just, it was a matter of the rawhide itself. There was a little wrinkles on there, but when that dries, it was just fine. Inside. You can tell already because of the, probably because of the dishwashing detergent in the water. I betcha I could just hold this in wood water, but I'm going to add some glue to it. Starting at the handle. The sizing is thinner, making sure I got it on the edges. And I don't want to get any glue on the surface in case I die it, so I'm really careful to. Brush it away and make sure it's hanging over so I'm not getting any glue. Edges are the key. Let that hang over a little bit. Get it into that crevasse. Oops. Not good. Again, I'm lifting it up so I don't get any on the right there. Stretch it. How long did I soak my rawhide? About a half an hour. Actually, the soapy mixture helps it soak in. And this is how I squeeze air bubbles out. I do not have air bubbles. You notice that there is an excess glue pouring all over the carpet. Just tuck that down. And when I pull this, that's where I left off. You can see the, the glue in there. I'll do it in three. And my fingers are damp, so it helps the glue spread. Edges are the big thing. There's enough glue on there to bond. You 
even if I don't get any on it, my spend even cold. And this is the lightest way to do it, the lightest as far as not having excess glue. Stretch it. Center, squeeze up. crazy with the glue. Don't want an extra weight. Don't need a thick glue layer between the hide and the wood. You want it hide and wood. Not hide glue wood. I don't go crazy with stretching it. It's not so, you know, I get some stretch enough to even it out, but I'm not really good luck around stretching it. Having an uneven amount of stretch in each height will also give you headaches and tillery. You want to have the same amount of stretch on both sides, same evenness. Because imagine you had thicker hide than on this side, and you tiller it, when that hide relaxes after a while, it'll change the tiller. So it's better to have a moderate amount of stretch in each hide when you're laying it down, and that way your tiller will be less problematic. right-handed so I'll make it this way. Now height has a harder time gluing the height, so you want to make sure that you have enough glue on that joint. And also it's going to be hidden by the angle wrap, so dying and painting and such won't be as much of an issue. sure that the edges aren't dry. to the edge, the edge, be on the edge. my over my Watching for right there, the glue line. Third. 
being careful that you don't get glue on the back. This is why I'm squeezing up the air. Slide that down so when I'm pushing the net. Crazy with the going over. Pulling it off this edge so I don't get around the back. Get right there to the end. And now it's time to wash my hands. As I mentioned before, you can actually bake a bowl without wrapping it, but I will. But I'm not going to wrap it until it sets up. Because the last thing I want to do is wrap it and pull the rawhide off the side, decenter it. I want it to set up before I wrap it. That way I'm not going to shift the rawhide. I'm not going to seal it down with wrinkles or air bubbles. I want to see what this baby looks like before I even think about wrapping. about me this. Making sure the edge of this side matches up with this. Even though it's hidden, it's all in the details. It's also nicer if you let it dry off a little bit before you wrap it because you get to reuse your gauze if you're not gluing it to your ball. It'll sand off. has water and salt on it. Water and salt. Don't want to forget this one that you started on. It'll help too if the end goes over the end a little bit because then it'll secure it with the wrap and it won't shrink back. I didn't over soak it, and I didn't over stretch it. This plate is not going to have a tendency to like pull away from the glue. I didn't do much stretching sideways. I did all my stretching and lengthening 